Welcome back to MyJuryBunch.com. It's Pete again. And today what we're going to work on is this model uh, 16610 Rolex Submariner that has a smash crystal and has a ton of debris in it. I want to show you basically how to figure out if we can save the dial and make sure there's no damage to it and where to find the crystal if you don't know how. Okay guys, so let's get involved in this and find out what we have to do to get all this cleaned out of here. Now there's some considerations that you're gonna to need to be aware of when a crystal cracks like this. And you can see, if I bring this up to the camera, the crystal shattered straight through and a lot of pieces have now fallen out, but we still have a lot of debris that's inside the watch. And we have to consider that chances are when this cracked like this and it's been transported back and forth to the jeweler before I got it, Unfortunately, there's probably going to be some minor damage to the dial. That's going to be the customer's option if they want to replace the dial or have the dial refinished. That's not uh, our decision to make. So what we're going to do here to give this customer an estimate on this particular watch is we're going to get all the crystal out of the watch um, to the best we can bef before we even consider doing a service. And um, we are going to then estimate the crystal replacement and let the customer know what the cost is going to be. So I haven't gotten approval on this, but I do have to clean this out before we go any further. So let's get started with that. Um, the first thing I want to do is remove the movement from the watch. To do that, just to make my life a little bit easier, I'm going to remove the auto winding system. This is a 3135. We've got two screws that hold in the winder. So we have to remove the two screws, one here and one here, and we can pull the winding system out. Okay, so now the movement's exposed, and the next thing to do is to loosen the watch movement from the case, and we do that by tightening up these two little screws, one here, and we'll turn that counter, we'll turn that clockwise, and we'll tighten up this screw, and that loosens the movement. On these particular watches, the uh, if you loosen or unscrew these case screws, it actually tightens the whole movement in the watch case. So now that that's done. I am going to remove the stem and crown. Put that aside and now I'm going to gently turn this so that I can get this out. And there we go. So the movement's out of the case. You can see there's glass everywhere. The movement is working. And now I'm going to go and examine this under the microscope and I'm going to determine how much damage or how much debris is in the watch movement itself. And now just remember with the shattered crystal, you have this big opening here where the date ring is and that debris will inevitably make its way into the watch. So whenever a crystal cracks like this, instead of just a fracture on the surface, I always recommend a full service because that glass will actually cause more damage to the watch. I'm kind of like sand and debris. So keep that in mind. But uh, you can see the amount of debris that's on this. First thing I'm going to do just to clear that off is just blow this a little bit. And by using a hand blower, we can actually remove as much debris without doing any more damage to the surface of the dial. Very, very important. I am taking a chance that uh, I might blow some glass into the date ring hole, but there's nothing I can do about that. It's already there. <clears throat> now from there, I can take some Rotico and I can just test a little bit before I shut the movement down and just see if the Rotico will pick up 
any debris off the dial. And it's getting a little bit And I'm pushing straight down with the Rotico so that I don't move it or scratch any of the lacquer that's on the face of the dial. And I want to get as much off as possible before I even attempt to take the hands off. Now most of those little spots that you see on the dial are actually um, damage to the dial itself. And it's hard to see, but that glass does do a lot of damage. It's very sharp and it'll scratch the lacquer and finish on these dials. And there's unfortunately almost nothing I can do to clean that up any better. Okay, so now I've got the hands off and I'm gonna take my Rotico and I'm just gonna go over this a little bit more and just see if I can get any more debris off of this dial and unfortunately I think even some of the dial feet I think the dial feet might have broken off on this we're gonna find out in a second and it's not terrible but you can see cover a few little spots that are on the dial I'm just gonna to try to rub those off just a little bit That's as good as I can get that right now. Uh, let's take the dial off and first thing I'm gonna do is clean off my bench here. <clears throat> so what else did I find when I'm looking at this? Well, okay, so I see a couple more things here. Um, besides all the glass debris that's on the case and the broken crystal, we also have a bezel that no longer turns, which means there's probably some glass lodged in that. So I have to take the bezel off anyhow. So let's get that off. Okay, here's our bezel, and yes, you can see there's some glass that's stuck in that bezel. We'll put that aside, and the click for the bezel is very dirty, so I think this watch had some issues beforehand, but this actually has to come out so that I can get the crystal out. So let's take that out. That bezel wouldn't have turned regardless. So even though there was some glass in there, you can see the amount of dirt that's in this is just horrendous. Now let's get the washer out. Put that aside. And let's take a look at the model number of this watch. So right there is our worn out model number. And we're going to go look that up and find out what the scoop is so we can get the right crystal for this. Okay guys, so now the problem is we've got this watch with a crystal that's destroyed and we have to replace it. So how do we know which crystal to get? So now most of us in the profession, we have catalogs and we have the reference numbers. We know the part numbers for all the products that we have to order. But if you don't, and you're looking for the correct crystal for your watch, you need to know the model number of the watch itself which is located on the lower end of the watch case underneath the band. So you'll have to take your band off, look behind where the end cap attaches and you'll see the model number of the watch. In this case, this is a 16610 uh, Submariner. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go look up the reference point for that particular crystal. We know it's a sapphire crystal, so I'm gonna go look here for a generic crystal because that's probably what most of you are gonna get. So if we look for Rolex, 
crystal. Actually, I'm on Esslinger.com, which is a watch supplier. They sell to the general public. So we'll do a search for uh, Rolex crystal. And I'll bring that up. So here we have the crystals that are available by, you know, for Rolex watches generically. We have the gaskets. Um, you know, most crystals do come with gaskets. So just keep that in mind. Whenever you change a crystal, you should also change the gasket. The plastic crystals don't come with gaskets. Those are the gaskets themselves. So in this case, we have a windowed crystal sapphire. So we're going to look under generic Rolex crystals. And we are presented with the generic uh, sapphire crystal for a Rolex with the date window and here are the part numbers that we can order the problem is now we don't know which watch these are for now there are literally literally thousands of Rolex watches so what we need to do and, and Esslinger is good about this you can come down here where it says click for our generic crystal chart I'm going to right click on that and I'm going to open that up in a new tab up pops the tab and we need to find the model number of our watch so the case number here uh, and we're, we're going to scroll down until we find 16610. And it is right here. So this line here, if I can get this line, uh, we'll just call it that. This is the model number of our watch. And here we have a part number of 25-295C2, which is the part number from Esslinger. And the 295C is the number that we're concerned with. So that's the number of the crystal that we need to order for this particular model watch. And you can see that crystal is used on many, many different varieties of watches. So from here, I can reference that crystal, go back to Esslinger, and I can go back to the storefront here, and under that, I can select 295C. And it pops the price, $19.95 plus shipping and handling, and there's the SKU number or the part number for the order. Now, the 295C is the part number that references the Rolex part number. So, for instance, if you want to go search for a 295C, you can look that up just about anywhere else also. You don't have to just order a generic. You can actually find the, uh, an original crystal using that particular part. Now, let's say I have a, a customer who has... I'll give you a real-life example here. Yesterday, I received a message um, over YouTube from somebody asking what crystal they need to order for their 1500 series Rolex caliber 1570, which is an older Rolex, 36 millimeter, I believe. And they didn't know if the crystal they ordered was the correct one. He seems to think it doesn't fit. So the same process applies here. You're going to scroll down. You're going to open up the chart here. And I've already got it open, so we're going to scroll that down to the 1500. So over here, we have a model 1500, which is right here, 1500-8. And 1500 is actually the number. Don't worry about anything else there. These are all other reference numbers. And there's the part number. It's a 25-117. Okay, so now I know it's a 25-117. And I can come back over here. And that crystal was a plastic crystal on that particular watch. So we're going to come back in the... Uh, in the shopping cart here, we're going to look at the plastic generic crystals, and we know it's a 117, so I can come over here, a Cyclops 117, and that would be the part for that particular watch. What happens, however, um, and a lot of you know this, there are many crystals available that you can convert your plastic Cyclops to a sapphire uh, crystal. There are several considerations to think about. You need a little bit higher uh, gasket so if you get a regular low gasket your second hand may rub against the inside of the sapphire crystal but you can also go look this up anywhere else uh, look for a sapphire crystal model 117 and I'll show you how we do that and if a lot of you guys are probably going to order on eBay so I'm going to go to eBay.com and I will do a Rolex crystal 117 and we'll do a search there. And up pops, here we go, a sapphire crystal for a Rolex 1500 to 5701. And it's a 25-117. So there you go. Here's the sapphire equivalent. And it's hard to tell, but in this picture, I can tell that's a little bit of a higher 
uh, raised gasket on that particular model. You'll also find the plastic versions here, and you'll probably find the real versions. So here's the original Rolex brand uh, that you can get, but for the most part on eBay, you're gonna get generics. However, again, this is used mostly for those of you who want to change your plastic cyclops to a sapphire crystal if you so choose to do. That's how you would do it. Consider. And that's how you determine which crystal that you need for your particular watch. So I'm going to go ahead and just put this in my cart and then I will deal with the customer when he does approve it or does not approve it. We'll just deal with it later but I'm not gonna do any further service work on the watch other than just test it to make sure it's keeping time. Thanks for watching guys, I hope that helped you. Um, again, you can go to esslinger.com, you type in the caliber or the, the, the model number of the case for your particular watch and that will give you the cross reference for the crystal that you need, either plastic or sapphire. And you can convert some plastic crystal watches to sapphire. Um, those kits are available aftermarket only, so keep that in mind. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing. And if uh, you can, help share this video with anybody.